All right, everybody. I uh, thought I would make a uh, a short uh, kind of how-to video on um, diagnosing some problems uh, when you're trying to evaluate a Honda motor with uh, uh, with variable valve timing, uh, VTEC. Um, one of the problems with uh, diagnosing problems with VTEC in these uh, uh, in these Honda engines is um, it, it's an it's a conditional set of operations that only happen under load while the car is driving and so parked in your driveway when you're trying to see what's wrong and you're revving the engine or you're looking under the hood you can't see it and the only way you could see it is if the car was operating on a dyno and uh, load conditions were simulated along with speed so it, it gets real complicated trying to figure out what's wrong with this stuff sometimes so this video is just basically going to go over a simple uh, pretty straightforward method that uh, you can apply to pretty much any um, uh, Honda VTEC uh, system, um, but I will reserve that and just say that it the the newer IV Tech systems I'm not familiar with the K series motors I'm not familiar with. Uh, what we've got here is obviously just uh, uh, this is a um, NF22 B1 uh, and a CD5 chassis. Uh, this is your you know typical Honda engine. Uh, with the single uh, cam VTEC. So this is this is basically your uh, efficiency uh, more or less uh, purpose-built VTEC system as you only have the VTEC system on the intake rocker arm assemblies, not on the exhaust. Um, the, the purpose of this VTEC system on these single cam uh, Accord motors, uh, it, in reality, is, is is mostly for fuel economy. If you compare the lift on the high cam lobe to that of the F twenty two B two, the non VTEC motor, uh, the lift on the high cam for the VTEC motor is very similar to the lift that occurs all the time on the one single lobe of the F twenty two B tech intake valves. So it's it's not really designed for performance. It's more designed for efficiency. Um, in the low speed setting, the uh, the intake valve, uh, you have one intake valve that opens um, to a full drop, essentially. Not a full drop, but uh, you have one intake valve that performs normally, and then at low speed, again, you have the second intake valve, which just opens slightly. And the idea is to create a swirling pattern of the air as it enters the combustion chamber to approve atomization of the fuel and air. But anyway, I digress. Um, how we're going to do this test is uh, kind of ripping off an idea and making it DIY friendly from Honda. Um, as you can see, the valve cover is removed. The distributor is removed. Uh, right now I have the thermostat housing and the uh, the VTEC solenoid disconnected. Um, you don't need to do all this. Uh, I'm in the process of doing a couple other things and it just makes it easier for me to point things out. Um, but this right here, this is a good thing to inspect when you do this test. This is the VTEC solenoid. Uh, this is the uh, the mating side of it. Okay, So this solenoid is essentially a simple switch that mounts to the back of the cylinder head. Uh, basically right here you have a flat surface on the uh, on the back of the cylinder head okay and it's right by the thermostat housing group. It, it's tough to get to if that thermostat housing is on. Uh, and you've got three ports. Uh, one of those is connected to a relief port. That's an air port inside the cylinder head. See if I can keep my light here. Okay. 
So this top port here actually goes straight through and comes out the other side. You can see here that's all it does. So uh, Honda tells us we need to block this when we're doing this test because what we're going to do is use air to simulate the uh, the hydraulic effect that oil would have because oil is the driving factor that engages your VTEC system uh, with these these pins uh, and in between these rocker arms that's the mechanism that's the the aggregate if you will uh, that flows through these channels uh, it almost acts like brake fluid your engine oil um, but these two pins, excuse me, these two holes down here are the actual channels where the oil will flow. And if you look at these two in relation to your VTEC solenoid, you'll see that what you've got is basically two chambers. Okay? Uh, you've got an in and an out. And that's all there is to it. And uh, the bottom is where it comes in, and the top is where it feeds into the VTEC system. Um, when you pull this off, uh, prior to doing this test, and again you don't have to, but it's recommended you do for this reason, you've got this gasket. This is a, uh, this is a screen gasket, it's a rubber gasket. Uh, this one's fairly new because I've had this engine apart for several different reasons. Uh, but it's just a rubber gasket. And all this does is go right in there like that and you know it just fits right in place but the important thing is to check the condition of this screen if that screen has dirt debris uh, or worse metal shavings in it uh, you have essentially uh, blocked the path of oil uh, traveling into the cylinder head to operate your VTEC system and that is uh, one of the main culprits for why these systems fail um, if you think of it like uh, like a plumbing system almost in a house um, you need to keep your pipes clear you can't have uh, you can't always be flushing golf balls down the toilet well it's the same thing with your VTEC so if your VTEC's not engaging um, oil pressure uh, a dented oil pan or a clogged gasket can be the culprit here's a couple of these that um, I've pulled off other cars uh, this is uh, this is off an H22. Um, in respect to the Accord solenoid, it's a little bit larger, but uh, functionally very similar. You got all the same components. Uh, this hole right here, this is for a uh, pressure sensor. Um, the OBD1 cars used a pressure sensor mounted on these VTEC solenoids to uh, mandate whether or not VTEC could engage. Uh, in 1996, OBD2 rolled around and Honda got rid of that and uh, they just go by the uh, oil pressure sending unit uh, for engagement. So what you'll have here on an OBD2 car uh, is just um, what looks like a ceiling bolt. Um, it's just a nut basically and some people wonder why it's there they think somebody took something off, but no. If your car or your VTEC solenoid is from a 96 or newer uh, Honda, it's going to have that ceiling not there. You can see here, um, it's a pretty good example since we got off the car. You've just got uh, your one wire uh, feeding directly out of the solenoid body on the top. Um, and all that is is a hot wire. That's a one wire hookup. Um, because it's solenoid and all it is is a switch. Um, basically it's on or off and when this gets power, when this gets its 12 volt source from A8 or whatever other pin you have depending on your car, uh, when it gets its 12 volt source and the conditions are met for VTEC engagement, it opens up and allows oil to flow into those galleys we were just looking at. Um, okay. That's my little uh, brief introduction. 
We're going to get on with the test, but first I need to set a couple things up, so uh, we're at 10 minutes on one video. I think that's enough. Um, I'll be right back in just a minute, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get this thing set up, and I'll show you how we do this.